From a cargo ship in China that crashed clean into a busy bridge and a speeding boat on the Columbia River that forced these anglers overboard, to a cruise ship in Venice that crashed into a smaller boat full of passengers, and a whale-watching yacht in San Diego that nearly took out this little old lady. Here are 10 ridiculous ship collisions caught on camera. If you travel west of Seattle, you'll come across several large islands as you make your way toward the Pacific Ocean. One of those islands is called Vashon Island, home to about 10,000 people living on roughly 37 square miles of land. Many locals rely on small charter boats and large ferries to get to and from the city. On December 5th of 2016, passengers aboard the Washington State Ferry looked off the starboard bow to see a small boat heading right for them. The ferry operator pulled the horn relentlessly, but the clueless captain never moved. Let's see who wins this expedition fight. Oh my god. What's going on? Luckily, the smaller boat bounced off the ferry and kept going. It doesn't look like there was any serious damage, at least not enough to sink the ship. To add insult to injury, the name of the private boat was Nap Time. You can see it printed on the back when it passes the ferry. Our captain spells the word time with a Y instead of an I. According to a spokesperson for the ferry, the person piloting Nap Time was below deck when the boats collided. If we had to guess, they were probably napping. The shock was enough to wake them up. You can see someone emerge from below deck moments later. Clear Lake is an affluent area in southern Houston, Texas. It's home to Space Center Houston. You know, the place where astronauts call to say we have a problem? Well, there was a major problem on May 11th of 2020. It just wasn't occurring in space. It was actually on the waters of Clear Lake, a large body of water that's home to a ton of recreational boats and marinas. The skipper of an emergency towboat fell overboard. Unfortunately, he didn't have his kill switch lanyard attached. His boat spun out of control while nervous bystanders recorded the whole thing. trying to get to it. They, they're the same company. He's gonna... Hey, that's a good excuse getting the dock. That dock, he needs new something over there. I think that he needs new... Uh-oh, he's getting close again. Well, that's where he almost flipped over the long way. Oh, wow. There goes the dock. Ah. Oh my god! Oh my god! So dangerous! Oh my gosh, I hope nobody's. I hope that guy's okay. I hope no kids are out there. Damn! That boat would go on to crash through another dock and land in someone's backyard. They heard what sounded like a bomb outside, only to find a towboat sputtering near their door. Thankfully, nobody was on the boat when it crashed. The captain was pulled from the water and rescued by another emergency towboat. Now, kill switches are lanyards that connect the captain to the boat's engine. If the captain falls off, the kill switch disconnects and turns the engine off. Without it, the boat will keep going until it runs out of gas or, more likely, crashes.
Hurricane Ian left Fort Myers, Florida in shambles. The Category 5 Atlantic hurricane caused nearly $113 billion worth of damage. Thankfully, some kind-hearted Floridians were willing to use their boats to help clean up. Brandon is one of those kind-hearted folks. He brought his barge down to Fort Myers to help with the aftermath. Unfortunately, he was the one who needed helping. A much larger barge appeared on the horizon, and it was coming right toward him. What the fuck? Oh, no way! It's actually about to happen. Yo, hold on, hold on, hold on, boys. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yo! Yo! Hey, unstrap these, unstrap Hey! How are we gonna get that chain off? That shot just broke. Yo! Yo! Dude, that's the... Call, call Ethan. Call Ethan right fucking now. Well, maybe we should find better ways to move these giant barges other than tugboats pushing them. It seems pretty hard to control something that big, especially when you can't see anything in front of you. Thankfully, Brandon and his buddies undid all the straps and released their barge before anybody got hurt. The extent of the damage is unclear. But thanks to this video, we imagine he's got a solid insurance claim. The port of Kaohsiung is the largest harbor in Taiwan. It is a critical transit point for ocean trade between Asia, Europe, and the Americas. With over 300 routes spreading across five continents, it is among the busiest marine ports in the world. That means accidents are bound to happen. On November 3rd of 2018, a three-ship collision plunged the port of Kaohsiung into chaos. It began when a chemical tanker, Deryun, collided with another ship while moving between berths. Unfortunately, that other ship was an oil tanker named Qinxing. CCTV cameras were rolling aboard the Deryun when Qinxing appeared off the port flank. The nose of Qinxing smashes through the side walls and scrapes across the side of the ship. Once Deryun made it back to port, people on the ground recorded the damage. <laughs> According to Deryun's owners, there were no oil spills or anything to worry about. The ship did suffer some hull damage, though. You can see ballast water spilling out the port side. Looking back at the CCTV footage, you can see how this could have been much worse. Had Qinxing been shorter, the bow could have gored the side of Deryun. Luckily, it only destroyed the railing and caused minor damage to the hull. Now, what you don't see in this clip is the moment that Qinxing tries to move away and strikes another vessel, a Japanese cargo ship called Setsumaru. Now, thankfully, the damage was minimal and Setsumaru could continue its route to Okinawa. Changsha, China is the 17th largest city in the country by population. It's home to just over 10 million people and sits atop the Xiang River. The river, which runs north to south, splits the city in half. Locals have to rely on boats and bridges to get from one side to the other. On July 23rd of 2021, one of those bridges nearly collapsed when a cargo ship crashed into one of the support pillars. Imagine driving across the bridge, having no idea that it could collapse at any moment. It's unclear how the ship hit the bridge or why it was sailing at an angle. Safety crews rushed to the scene to ensure the bridge remained stable. Somehow, the impact didn't cause any damage, at least not enough to raise concern. Traffic kept moving, and we assume some minor repairs were made. As for the captain, well, hopefully he'll keep things straight next time. Venice is an island city in northwestern Italy. It consists of 126 tiny islands, all sitting in the shallow waters of the Venetian lagoon. 
Venice is among the most popular tourist destinations in the world. People love it for its picturesque views and winding canals. As you can imagine, boats are a major part of everyday life. Sometimes those boats get a little too big. On June 2nd of 2019, a three-deck cruise ship called the MSC Opera arrived in the waters of Venice. It was supposed to dock at one of the VTP cruise terminals, but something went horribly wrong. The ship experienced a catastrophic engine failure and was unable to stop. Let's put it this way, the tiny tourist boat in its way never stood a chance. The smoke you see is coming from the small tourist boat moored at the pier. According to one of the sailors, everyone on board panicked when they saw the ship coming. Luckily, they had enough time to get off and run to safety. Now, cruise ships like this have become a problem for the people of Venice. They're way too big for the small Italian city. They block the natural views and create waves so big that they risk damaging the city's infrastructure. The Adventure Hornblower is a 150-foot mega-yacht that offers daytime whale-watching tours to the people of San Diego. At night, it features three bars, a state-of-the-art sound system, and a dance floor. On April 1st of 2016, the Hornblower was approaching the dock when something went horribly wrong. Spectators on the wharf could tell this mega-yacht was about to crash. Hey, moi je ne monte pas avec des fous comme ça. Et ben peut voir directement pour voir. Now don't worry. Grandma hobbled to safety before the boat hit the seawall. According to the fire department, the yacht's propulsion system malfunctioned. Apparently, the throttle got stuck in the forward position. That'd be like your gas pedal getting stuck when it's pushed all the way down. The only way that boat was stopping was by crashing into something. Now, the impact caused significant damage to the boat's hull and buckled part of the brick walkway. Of the 144 people on board, only seven sustained minor injuries. Three had to be taken to the hospital after hitting their heads. Thankfully, everyone made a full recovery. The Biak Archipelago is a cluster of islands off the north coast of Papua, Indonesia. It's home to about 122,000 people and is known for its reefs, corals, and atolls. During World War II, the Japanese army used the main island of Biak as a strategic airfield and a base of operations. Now, many of the locals rely on ferries to get between the different islands. Some are larger than others, so they require skillful captains and attentive crews to sail. On April 22nd of 2022, one of those large ferries, the Sinaboom, grossly overestimated its speed while coming into port. Woo! What up? Dermaga hancur.
Anjur, 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 anjur. The Sinabung may have been too big for its own good. There's a chance the captain never saw the smaller boat. You'd think someone would have warned them, but maybe they assumed the captain knew what he was doing. That said, the captain would be positioned high enough to see everything over the bow. Either he wasn't paying attention, or something went wrong with the ship. Luckily, nobody was on the smaller boat when the Sinabung crashed into it. The crash left an eight and a half foot dent in the side of the ship. The Sinabung was built in 1997 and has a carrying capacity of nearly 15,000 gross tons. It's over 480 feet long and about 78 feet wide. It's not the kind of ship you'd want to crash into. Tuapse, Russia is a seaport town on the northwestern coast of the Black Sea. It's the northern portion of a larger resort area extending south towards Sochi. It's a key transport hub on the Black Sea and is also home to one of the largest oil terminals in the area. On December 20th of 2020, a ship called the Isartal needed a tug into port. The tugboat must have tugged a little too hard. As the Isartal tried to berth, they wound up floating right toward another ship. If we had to guess, our cameraman is telling his fellow crew members to get off the ship before the situation gets any worse. Back at the crash site, you can see the massive dent left on the ship's side. It also looks like the Isartal suffered some damage to its bow. It seemed like everybody was okay and the Isartal was able to get themselves docked. Some commenters on Reddit wondered if these ships should bother repairing the damage. It would be cooler and much cheaper to wear them like battle scars. Astoria is a port city in northwestern Oregon. You probably know it as the setting for 1985's The Goonies. It's home to about 10,000 people and three local anglers who had to abandon ship. It was January 16th of 2018. Our anglers were fishing on the Columbia River when they saw a much bigger boat speeding toward them. They tried to signal the captain to stop, but he was going way too fast. The captain was allegedly sitting down and never saw the smaller boat over his bow. If they didn't jump overboard, our anglers could have been seriously injured, or worse. The smaller boat's owner sued the offending captain for over $300,000. The captain also pleaded not guilty to several criminal charges, including fourth-degree assault and reckless endangerment. If you enjoyed this video and want to see another just like it, be sure to click the link on screen now. With that, thanks for watching and be sure to tune in next time.